Well, to say that was a seesaw semi-final doesn't do that justice at all. Both players had their chances and plenty of them, but John Norman Jr. with double 16 has booked his place in the final. I'm not sure how Dawson Michelle felt about the celebration, but uh, you can understand why he's uh, celebrated because he has booked his place in that final and a chance to win $10,000 plus his place in the World Championships in December. It wasn't the highest quality and that last leg really you could feel the pressure in here. Yeah both players really suffered didn't they from what actually you can achieve by winning this tournament and they really suffered all the way through but Dawson really the problem started there in leg five. It was in his head for the rest of the match because he should have been 4-1 ahead. So you think that was the, the sort of turning point? Yeah he had a, he had a shot at 74 he hit the treble 18 and, and, had, uh, and had a couple of darts at double 10 and then he carried that over. Even we thought the break may have come at a good time for him, so he could sort of, ref you know, not have time to reflect on it and then come back. Uh, but he didn't. He just dragged it well, all the way left through. Left himself 102 after nine darts in the yeah. next leg, thinking, okay, he's got that out of his mind, and then made a mess of that. Yeah. Had six darts from 102 and, and, and couldn't finish. For those wondering what that noise was, that was the aftershock of John's celebration <laughs> in uh, yeah. in Las Vegas. We feel it here in, in the studio. <laughs> Um, Dawson had a, had a dart to win the match and he, he, his second dart at Shanghai 120 was yeah. very good. Composed himself really well there. I mean the first dart was I just mean, underneath he and he just wondered where it was going to go. He's got a you? tiny fraction to aim at and he, you can see he's moved along the hockey, changed his angle of entry and finds a perfect second dart. It looks like he's done but everything right. He's just dwelled on it a little bit too long. Some players can do it. Uh, but this is just too long. Look, I mean, you probably look at you know 20, 25 seconds. It's far too much computing and analysing going on in the brain. And, and there is the result. I mean, it was closer to double one than tops. Alan, for a young player, is what we saw in Dawson there late on, is that just sort of a lack of big game experience, that sort of tenseness that you'll feel? But it has to be because he was playing so well at the time. And, he, you know, he's, he's dug himself into good positions in this tournament so far. And he was in such a good position at that point and he's let it slip and he still had moments where he could have got back in but he couldn't quite mm. get there and to go to lose on that last leg there and you know the celebration from John he wasn't too happy with obviously uh, the, the big bear hug and yeah that would have gone down well um, how would you have reacted to that yeah, <laughs> he'd still be on the stage um, the, the thing is unless you've been there and experienced that you know, uh, on countless occasions, you do unless you've been there and done it, you don't know how you're going to react. And that was the problem there. He took a little bit too long. He, he sort of he overcomplicated after what was a fabulous second dart to to give himself one dart for the match. But you have to just go through those mm. things. You know, the beauty of the game is now he's 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 in the UK. He's playing full time. He's got a chance to put that right. I mean, it's literally it's week on week on week on week. Yeah, well, from, from one inexperienced player in Dawson Michelle to an experienced player in Jeff Smith, he's taking on Dan Lalby in our second semi-final. And Jeff will want to up his game from what we saw in the quarter-final, Alan. Well, he kind of got away with that first one, as we all know. So maybe he's thinking, well, OK, I've had my bad game now. Now it's time for me to turn it on. And uh, young Dan, obviously, very inexperienced. Uh, obviously got a decent throw and a good future ahead of him, hopefully. But, you know, he's got so much experience, Jeff. He's got to shoot and prove it. Uh, other than the obvious of throwing better and scoring better, what will Jeff want to do differently here? Well, he, he'd just have to find a little bit more rhythm to his game. I think he was a bit too deliberate in that first match. And make no mistake about it, if he repeats that performance in this one, lauby has got every chance. Right, a chance to join John Norman Jr. in the final of the North American Darts Championship, competing for $10,000 and a place in the World Darts Championship final in December. Let's find out who will join John Norman Jr. at the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas. Yes, he kind of put it in uh, Dawson's face there a little bit, but that's the emotion. I mean, that happens in darts a lot of the time. You just accept it and get on with it. And when Dawson beats him next time, you just return the favour. We've all been there. Um, but, he, you know, he, we talked about it on stage. I mean, Dawson just let himself down on those doubles and you could see the frustration and the tension of missing those doubles. And, you know, you've, that's when you've really got to get in your own mind and say, right, let's relax, keep the tempo down. So you can start pinning on those doubles. But he, he was just getting angry with himself. He was. And I don't think his anger will have subsided just yet. But we have one man in the final. He has survived a match dart to get there. Jeff Smith has already survived a match dart to reach this stage. Game on. Edged through against Ross Snook in his opening game, whereas Danny Lorby was a 6-4 winner, holding off a fight back from Joe Huffman. 
140. And we didn't see much of that in his opening game from Jeff Smith. There were a lot of one Four treble visits, 21. but he wasn't following them in to the treble 20. That'll be encouraging for him. Yeah, I think we're going to see a, a different Jeff Smith here. I think he's going to play the game that we know he can play, wow. consistently play, as he gets his first maximum of the match and his second visit. And uh, this young man, Danny Lawby, an up and coming, one of the, you know, the talents of all the youngsters that are coming through. He's played a few times on the development tour back in England. You know, it's a, it's a big track for a young man, especially the financial side of it. It uh, costs all a lot of money. Want. But uh, there's Ross Snook. Well, he seems to have got over the disappointment of missing a match start against Jeff Smith. 30. Yeah, he played a couple of World U Championships. Did Danny Lorby, 2013 and 14. Didn't get to the latter stages. But it's all experience for him. 100. It's all about the youth, isn't it, Rod? That's what you always say. Well, we haven't got a future with Adam Dan. That's for sure. But sometimes... The youth want it right now. And that's a good start to this semi-final match for Jeff Smith. 13 dart leg. It's just the sort of thing you want. Just to relax you. Just get yourself in the mood. 140. Yeah, well, he made a very slow start against Snook in the opening game to Jeff Smith. But he looks completely transformed now. Just seen his... Former protege Dawson Merchell agonisingly go out. It could well have been a Sorcerer v Apprentice clash in the final. 59. Whatever happens, three quarters of the semi finalists have been Canadian. Yes, only a third of the field at the start were Canadian. So uh, they've had a real good showing. I mean, North America. You know, it's always been strong at darts, and Canada was you know, back in the 80s and 90s. It was a, it was a real stronghold of darts. Well, you won a few tournaments over there, didn't you? A few, many, many yeah. years ago. I don't think these guys uh, had a chance to play me. I think they <laughs> probably Danny weren't even born. What about his dad? Do you ever play his dad? Yeah, Dan, yeah, yeah, the old fella. Yeah, he played on the PDC circuit for quite a while. Yeah, good, solid player. Yeah, made the match play one year. 1999. You remember who won it that year, Rod? Some old fella. That's a great visit from Jeff. Smith has set it up. Puts the pressure on the tops here for the young man. It's just above. It's not a badly thrown dart. Just unlucky, but that set up from Smith. It's a chance to break the throw. Well, that's the perfect guide. No I'm not even sure how he's put that third dart there no, without it glancing off the first two and going into the bed. Eight. Messy, Jeff scrappy, Jeff and as a, a fast thrower, Danny Lorby. You do wonder sometimes whether it'd be worth just taking an extra second to compose yourself. Twenty. Might work for Jeff Smith. Thirty-two. The problem with the quick throwers, and we see a lot of it, Danny, especially in Europe, yeah. how fast they are. If the first dart's in a good position, then they're great. But it's when that first dart starts to becoming, you know, erratic, that's when they can't seem to, you know, just stand back a bit, you know, and take their time. Um, a badly thrown first dart, you know, it, it, the other two normally follow it. Even it, it could sort of infect the whole visit, even if they're going for different targets around the board. Jermaine Watamina, the machine gun, a player probably as guilty as, as anybody of that. Well, if you take Michael Van Gogh in his early days, um, you know, it wasn't until, what, eight, nine years ago that he started actually winning. But back then he just was not quick, and, uh, was not consistent enough because he was too quick. I mean, he's still very fast, but he's still... Now he believes so much in his own ability and he's so focused at the moment that um, that rhythm, and he's got the longest what we call back take in the game. You know, it comes from right down low. When he, so he's got a long back take to set that dart perfectly in the, in the block hole to then release. And uh, although he's fast, it's actually a, a ended up a real good throw.
What's your take on Jeff Smith's throw? It looks, I mean, it looks really good from where I'm sat. 140. Yeah, it's a good solid throw. He doesn't rush. He's got good rhythm, but he doesn't rush it. Just sets it, you know, pulls it back and then release. Double eight. And he's chasing over the fours. This time he bends a double four. That's a good clean kill from Jeff Smith. That's just what he needed as well. You see with Danny Lorby there, just, you know, we say when he brings it back, he's just holding the dart off a little bit. Uh, well, it just makes a, the wrist have to do more reaction to get it straight. And sometimes when you're a little bit out of sorts, it's going to be tough. When you're playing well, nothing, you know, faults you. You, you know, you just don't think of anything. Yeah, it's a good follow through with the arm, isn't it? But it's just, there might be a little bit of lateral movement in there. Yeah, sometimes you have to be careful with players, you know, I mean, we comment on their throws, because that's what we get paid to do. Um, but, you know, you don't want to change too much, because sometimes you're going to take out that little bit of a natural ability that got them there in the first place. So it's trial and errors, really. And look, there's a million different ways to throw a dart, and some very effective ones. Even guys at the top of the game do not have what you would call... 100 orthodox throws take the winner of our first World Series event of the year, the German Darts Masters, Mensor Sulevich. Unique doesn't quite cover it. That's a good visit. Well, even Phil Taylor in his early day, when he used to bring the dart back, he'd be pointing at the chalker, the point. And, he, and he'd straightened that out and changed his darts and got even better than he was. But now Jeff Smith just needs a good visit here. Set it up. Needs to break young Lorby's throw sooner or later. They get a dart at a double if Lorby doesn't take out the 151. Well, already we're seeing from Jeff Smith in this game a lot more trebles. He only had no. three or four two treble visits in his entire first round game in the quarterfinals. He's already had six so far in this match. 18s now. Bullseye. 57. And he requires 60. Game's on the fourth leg. Danny Lord. We have a level game. He let it Jeff to throw first. Game on. Yeah, Jeff Smith's got the advantage that he did throw first in the match. So Lobby's going to have to break his throw. But what Jeff Smith needs to do is, is just break the young boy's throw, just to put that extra pressure on. When he's ticking along with an average in the low 90s at the minute, Smith, and that is kind of what he was doing all the way through the qualifiers, and it ended up putting him at the very top of the averages list over those two days of qualification here at the Mandalay no, Bay. Lorby is just about hanging in there at the moment, but the scoring is going to have to improve. Well, he only has to hold on to his throw and then have one blistering leg and break Jeff Smith's throw and all of a sudden he walks off the winner. 100. Averages don't always tell the story of what can happen. I mean, at the moment, there's 16 points difference in the averages, but it's two legs off. 121. Will be playing a lot of the CDC circuit over here. Seventh on the one year order of merit for 2018. Twelve events they've got over the course of the year. 81. Jeff Uruguay, 104. So 104 for Smith to go into the break with the lead. But he has got a little bit of time to work with. Halves his score, we'll get two darts for the leg, but Law B 99. is poised. 52. Double 18. Yeah, and 
Double nine is ten. No problem switching across the board for the silencer. Five legs, all of them holds a throw. Jeff Smith, the free tournament favourite, holds the narrowest of advantages as he looks to book his place in the final of the North American Championship. Sin City, where Dawson Marshall produced the cardinal sin of missing a match dart to make it through to the final. Jeff Smith and Dan Lorby looking to join John Norman Jr. in the final. It's Smith who holds the narrow advantage. It's everything has gone on throw so far. Five legs, all holds. Smith, 90 average compared to just 78 for Danny Lorby, but that will mean nothing if he can just keep holding and find one break to edge through against the silencer, a former world finalist. Stuart Pike has jumped into the commentary box to replace Rod Harrington. Yeah, young Danny will be Danny flying the American flag, isn't Game he? Uh, young Dawson Marshall raced out of uh, the venue after his defeat. Absolutely 83. devastated. Devastated, but he only has himself to blame. 3-0 up and lost. Jeff Smith survived a match dart in his quarter-final. Can the favourite take his place in the final? Make it an all-Canadian showdown. Safety. Ninety-six. Has won in Las Vegas before, as Jeff Smith won the Las Vegas Open. Three years ago, beat our co commentator Darren Young in the final. But this will be much more significant. $10,000. Spots in the World Championship. All on the line. Somebody walks away with it today. This day for, for these players. Some more experienced than others, some not experienced at all uh, in the big darting stages and the bright lights and the TV cameras, but there's much to do without the pressure of the situation. Brilliant 174 from Smith, but yes, who can handle it? Who can handle it the best? We've seen it so often already. Brilliant setup shot from Jeff Smith. Brilliant finish. Five perfect darts. The first breaker throw. Game on. And at the moment, you have to say, looking very, very good. It was classy, but it was also the arm of experience. Safety. Well, it is a youth of experience clash here. 100. 18 years difference between the pair of them. And Smith coming back after the break, firing in a strong leg. And as you say, five perfect darts to see off. 224, less than two visits, get that first break, and completely in the driving seat. At the moment. 100. I think Smith as well is, is trying to play the game at his own pace. Noticeably there, he was still drinking out of his glass of water as 58. young Danny Lorby had thrown his last dart. Very, very swift, isn't he? the young American. Yeah, very quick to the hockey as well. Yeah. And as soon as you look up, he's there and throwing his first start. And he's taking control of this leg. Hold on, it's a break, isn't a break without a hold. For all the good that we saw from Smith in the last leg, all the good darts are coming from his American Six. opponent. Draw to follow for the US Darts Masters 99. before our final. Well, he will get three darts at double top to break straight back Danny Lorby. But Smith has put him under pressure. He's asked the question of his young opponent. Has he got the answer? Emphatically, yes.
So, to make it a level game. First to six to take off John Norman Jr. of Canada. In the final. We can follow in the footsteps of Willie Bruyere, who won the first 57. inaugural North American Championship here 12 months ago. 25. A little bit of an experience there. He'd released the first dart before Smith had even got past his throwing arm, his, his line of sight. 125. It's a couple of years ago that Danny Lorby started breaking through on the CDC City. circuit. At the time, he was trying to put in two or three hours practice a day around his job as a, as a music teacher. But it's 100. all been building up to this chance, the biggest chance in professional darts to make the biggest tournament 100. in the world and take out some established pros along the way. A very talented musician. 89. Pretty good at tickling the tungsten ivories as well. 100. It's enough to leave a finish, but Smith, a double chance here. Still has a chance to take it out, but no longer. 65. Splits the difference. 156. On such shots, games can be won and lost, and you can see how frustrated he is at not following it in with the second dart. 84. Javier Iguana, 65. That's a poor one. That is a poor one. The double 18 has been pretty good to him. And yeah, is again, 5-3 to the Canadian, who now is throwing for a place in the final. To make it an all-Canadian final, too. Prior to the break, all we saw were holds a throw. Since then, it's been break, break, break. 94. Sixty. Well, he was 2-0 down. He was 5-3 down in his quarter-final against 41. Ross Snook. He survived a match dart, somehow won. And here he is now throwing for a place in the final. The pre-tournament favourite. 59. have seen it plenty of times in the past where... The favourite has turned up, and there's been one chance 96. where he could have been beaten. And if you don't take that chance, nobody else might come close. 62. And the first two darts were darts that I would normally throw. 100. Still the pressure comes from young Lorby. Good recovery. 81. Just about still the destiny in his own hands, but it depends on what Lorby can hit here. 60. Not really enough. 45. Probably six darts from here for the silencer to set up an all-Canadian final, but he could do it in three. He could do it in three double top. 125. Danny Rivera, 144. One match dart miss. Oh, my, could he? For the second time, he no, can't he follow it in. Yeah, and that means one, that Smith gets more match darts to set up an all-Canadian final with John Norman Jr. The silencer, Jeff Smith, pins double ten for a 6-3 victory. The last USA hope Danny Lorby is knocked out of the tournament. It is a former Lakeside finalist in Jeff Smith against John Norman Jr. The all-Canadian final for $10,000 and a spot at the biggest tournament in the world. The William Hill World Championship. Smith versus Norman Jr. in the final.